Hi YouTube, we're here with the ASH-26. I wanted to show you, I just spent the afternoon after I was done flying, I flew once and then I flew the F4U Corsair, which is right above you, hon. Um, basically, I, I noticed again that I felt like my rudder was just not effective or not as effective as it should be. I was able to slip the plane, but only just so. And I thought, you know, this plane really needs a rudder because sailplanes use a rudder a lot. So that being said, why don't we give them a close-up shot of the rudder. I ended up switching to a pull-pull system, something I've never used before. And I wanted to show you, uh, if you watch the build series, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's basically pressure here all the way through the range okay there's pressure where it matters okay so on the side where the wind's going to be pushing against it the air pressure from the flight speed you've got pressure before it was only true on one side and you'd go to the other side and you could just push it right out of the way with very little load so i thought oh boy that's working like crap okay another thing that we resolved is we cleaned up these holes um, I still need the vent to exhaust um, the air that's coming in from the plane. So I just covered them up. And then, of course, I had to cover up my ugly squish marks where I had squished into the balsa, which is very unfortunate. Um, one other thing I did on the outside exteriorly is I added a second set of CG marks, which basically I can feel. Oh, yeah, you can see them now. Okay, now I'm going to tip it so you guys can see. So, in the field, I can get my nose down attitude, just like that. This is with the lipo and everything in it. So, we'll get you an all-up weight here in just a second, but for now, let's show you the rest of the mods. Okay, come around. This stuff might be a little hard to film, so we'll do our best. Um, first things first, when I put on the canopy before, you guys notice I would always have to stop and, like, position it. Well, now I don't have to do that. It just goes right in where it needs to be, okay? And the way I accomplished that is I sanded this to a 45 to bevel it to the same uh, shape as that. And then I made a groove in the middle. So when I bring this in, it just goes every time. It's really nice. Because I noticed I was always having to take my second hand and do that. Okay, so that worked really nice. Um, I still haven't done anything to this as this uh, epoxy has cured. I've gotten a really nice fit here. Well, actually, I forget. That's right, I drilled a hole. Okay, so one thing you guys haven't necessarily seen is I took a bottle of, it was my, um, let me see if I can find it. It was this. It was a bottle of Silly. Equate multi-purpose solution for like contacts and I use that to rinse my eyes and stuff because I used to have contacts I had LASIK and so I was drying stuff so anyway I cut the, the the top was just super strong and so I ended up chopping the the lid off of that and then I cut it and it made this perfect it's got a hole right in the middle and I'll pull the battery here in a minute but I want to get you an all-up weight um it worked really nice and I said to myself self I want to be able to get this thing out again and so reluctantly rather than gluing it in I just used a bunch of tape and I mean a lot of this I probably used chunks like this like 10 of them and I just went all the way around the outside so it won't move forward and it won't move back that protects the the motor from having the battery engage it with some pressure um, it also stops the battery from hitting and being damaged which would facilitate crashing the plane in a hurry so okay the other thing is you'll notice this little strap um, basically that strap all right, so we repositioned there, guys. Sorry about that. Um, this is the other thing I added. I put tape over it. It's just a little arrow. And you'll notice the battery is lined up more or less with that red area. Well, when I'm loading my batteries, it's tricky. Basically, it slips out. So as we rotate that, now I can put my leads with the leads wrapped on the battery like this instead of wrapping like that. When they were wrapping out, it's really hard on the leads because you go the unnatural method for them. Okay, so basically I slide that back. Now we can give them a better shot. Let's get them a better shot of this. If you can show them this. 
you see how there's an opening in there but obviously the battery can't fit into it and of course the bell housing is behind there and then the wires come out over here and it's just taped in every side so it can move if we got in an accident then you know it might crush but at that point who cares right okay so basically i can take my battery slip it in slide it over to the side and then down and in and it's locked in so it works really nice because battery retention in a plane is handy it's not i mean you can add it later it's not that big a deal but um i've always had a heck of a time getting good battery retention in planes that don't have like a strap and obviously we had to cut out so much of this battery tray battery tray i don't know they call it a battery tray you can't use it if you had servos on it one servo would stop you Okay, so this is the pull pull system. Let's give a look at this. Okay, so you'll notice a couple of things about the pull pull system. I ended up taking the little black things, um, the little spacers that go under there as bushings you can use. And these little bushings work just great. And I used a, just a regular screw, a servo screw from a Hextronic screw to hold that in. And all I used was a, a single contiguous piece of, of wire and I'm gonna try to give you guys a shot down inside. You guys see that thing? I made a guard and this, or it's a guide. And so as the system runs, it keeps it away from the landing gear now. Um, when the landing gear comes up, the landing gear will not touch either of them now. And you'll notice this one's high and this one's low. And that's to keep clearance for the canopy. And so I'll demonstrate that now real quick. Okay, so see how it's not touching? You don't see anything moving on the plastic? It wasn't when I had them both on the top. So all in all, very productive um, repatriation of things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hated the push system I had before. It worked poorly. It wasn't effective. Oh, also I glued my servo plugs in. And then I also ran a, just a little teeny bit of hot glue on either side to hold that case shut. Um, I had a piece of tape on there and it was okay, but it was ineffective. And so basically the little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of play that's in there is the play that comes from this case. And that's normal. So all in all, guys, a good day's work. Um, had great success. And what was the other thing we were going to show? Wait, all up weight. Oh, yeah, all up weight. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get that set. Why don't you pause it and we'll come right back. All right, so guys, we're 3.2775 balancing on the CG point. point six. That's that's really good, guys. That's all up flying weight. Okay, so trade off for a sec here. So what we're gonna do is we'll we'll go ahead and switch the units back to pounds. So 1486. And just to show you the scales working, we have it zeroed for the CG thing. Here's two pounds. Three pounds and three and a half. So we're within a couple of hundredths, of a, or excuse me, that'd be a couple ten thousandths of a pound. So guys, this thing has been really good playing. And I think that the, what seems like menial changes today are gonna make it a really great plane. But we'll see, and you will too. Don't forget to like and subscribe, people.